Okay, I think it's okay. So I'm interviewing my sister about language in school. She's a a teacher. Um, Sam, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Samantha Adams. I'm a teacher at Washington New York Maritime Charter School. I'm a science teacher there, and I teach grades uh, 9, 11, and 12, general science and chemistry. Okay. Um, do you have any students from different cultural backgrounds um, or students, students from varying social economic statuses in your classroom? I do. I have both. I have several uh, ESL students, and I also have a large population of students from a low socioeconomic status. Okay. Um, as a teacher, how do you handle vernacular language for students using um, their languages from home in the academic setting? Um, do you welcome their use of um, their vernacular in the classroom? In the standard American when you're usually speaking in it? I would say for the most part, um, I do not correct it. Um, as long as I can understand the student, what they're saying, what they're expressing, then I allow them to speak it in the, in the classroom. We do have a policy at our school that we're not allowed to, uh, to have students um, speaking Spanish, which is what my ESL students, their primary language is. So, um, unfortunately, I can't allow them to speak their language. Um, like I said, if, as long as I can understand the student, though, the natural language isn't um, an issue in my room. Do you have to say anything to the students if you feel I'm speaking Spanish? Yeah, I have to tell them that they're not allowed to speak Spanish, they must speak English, and that that's the reason why they're in school is to learn English. Um, and usually they're stopped, they will stop. Uh, it's become less of an issue now that they are becoming more fluent in English. Do they usually know how to express what they're trying to say in English? Do they ever find? Yeah, most of them are pretty fluent in English. Um, there are uh, several students that will communicate to each other, usually about um, topics that aren't related to school, and that's why they're talking or they're speaking Spanish instead of English. Um, so, do you see this vernacular in their written work too? I do. Um, I see a lot of, especially um, language they would use with technology on Facebook and, and through text messaging. Um, where it has become more of an issue where they don't understand uh, when it's appropriate to use that language and when it's not. Um, when they're writing, because I'm a science teacher, I mostly grade and look for the content, unless I can't understand their written responses. If I can't understand it because of the vernacular language they're using, then I do have to correct it and, and speak to the student about how they are writing and how they express themselves through their written work. Okay. Um, so do you correct their language and try to make make them say it in a way that sounds more academic, would you say? Sometimes. I mean, depending on what, like I said, depending on the question maybe I'm asking or the response I'm looking for, um, I may ask them to rephrase their question. Um, usually I'll give them that opportunity before I go and try and correct it. Sometimes it's to the point where I'm, I have no clue what they're saying. So they have no other option than to rephrase it. And usually, um, once they do, I have a uh, much better understanding of what they're trying to tell me. Okay, so it's just sort of bridge your communication. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, do you think that some people have it easier than others in terms of what the language they speak at home and then the language they speak in school? Do you think that some people um, it's harder of a transition? Um, I definitely think it is, especially if students come from a family where they speak this academic language at home. Of course, it's going to be much easier for them to use the appropriate language at school. Um, the students who their parents don't or their parents don't use the academic vocabulary and they use the vernacular language, of course they're going to bring that language into the classroom and it's going to be uh, more difficult for them to adapt and change the way that they're speaking or speaking and writing. Um, do you think they notice that they have to make this change? Um, it depends. I don't know. I think sometimes they do. Um, 
I I can only speak for myself when I, like I said, sometimes I'll ask them to rephrase because I don't understand. And then they know that, but I don't know what other teachers do if they address it and say, I can't understand you or you need to um, use a different vocabulary or a different way of expressing yourself in school so that it's more appropriate for school. Um, yeah, it really depends on the situation. I think. So you said in school. So um, I you said you've heard of the concept of code switching. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that this code switching, do you think that um, if you explain to them, how do you explain this code switching process that they have to use a certain language in school versus a certain language out of school? I think it has been addressed in, in many of the classes because it's becoming much more of an issue the way um, students are speaking and writing in the vernacular language. Um, so for me, just explaining when it's appropriate to use the vernacular language and when it's not. Depending on the assignment, um, I think there are situations where they don't need to necessarily use their academic vocabulary, um, or the requirements may not say that, you know, or mark off maybe for that specific assignment if they do so. Um, I know sometimes I have kids write a rap or write a song as part of their project, and they choose to do that knowing that they can use their vernacular language and express themselves in the way they, they would normally express themselves at home. Yeah, I, I talked a lot about um, genre writing and how um, some genres are more academic and you just know that they have to be in sort of an academic prose versus um, if you do a poem or a performance, they, right. can, they know the vernacular. Is, do you think that they should put more weight on different assignments? I think they have they have to understand um, when to use which language. I think this is the biggest issue. They don't understand they are, they understand how to code switch, but they don't understand when they need to sometimes. So being more explicit about directions um, for assignments or directions for you know a written piece that they're doing in class, I think is important at the start of the assignment so students know you know when they have to code switch which and what kind of vocabulary they should be using. So when you hear standard American English, do you think that that phrase is sort of loaded? Like too standard is standard? Um, yes, but I think a lot of it now is defined by the standardized assessments that students are required to take. I mean, if we're considering that standard English, then we're holding them to that expectation and Maybe to make the standard as a standard English. So, so I mean, right now, I would say Pearson is the biggest one who defines standard English because they're all the ones making the common core exams, and uh, this is what we're held to as teachers. So this is what we have to hold our students to um, if they're going to do well and perform well on each class. So unfortunately, I think it is defined by test writers and test makers, um, which no, it isn't necessarily good, but that's the way it is. Do you see um, sort of maybe a class prejudice at all within standard American English? What do you mean? Like, do you think standard American English is in and being able to write and being able to talk in it? Do you? think that there's a power in having that and that the people who I definitely oh I definitely think so. I think um if students come in speaking, you know, the standard um English and having this higher academic vocabulary, I think of course, you know, um that's gonna give teachers a better impression of them. It, you know, as much as maybe we don't want to think so. It does, especially when you get into um, higher education and college. If, if you're speaking to your professor in your vernacular language, and they can't they can't maybe understand you, or the way you're writing is in vernacular, you they're know, bound to make judgments. Right, they're bound to make judgments, and unfortunately, you know, they probably will be um, taken off on assignments or you know points taken away because. They're, they don't have that ability to code switch, or maybe they don't have that vocabulary. They didn't learn it in 
their previous schooling or enough of it um, to be able to um, reach the expectations of maybe professors or teachers. So a lot of literature I've been reading about code switching has been um, saying that code switching is great, but we need to make students aware of why they must code switch, like how it will probably get them farther in life if they know how. Then do you think, it, what's your personal stance on, do you just live in teaching, try to teach code switching? Do you, do you, would you tell them exactly why? Do you think um, no, they need to understand I think, it? I think they do, and I don't think you need to make it so cut and dry and say, this is code switching, this is why you need to speak this way. You know, mm -hmm. you can sort of integrate it so they don't even realize that maybe they're code switching. Um, for example, I just had seniors, I'm responsible for having them write resumes. And there's a specific language that's expected on a resume. And at the beginning, before they, they wrote a resume, I showed them an example and looked at some of the vocabulary that the resume used and said, this is why it's important. Employers are going to look at it. This is the first impression they have of you, and they haven't even met you. So it gives them a good understanding of why they have to, for that specific assignment, use that particular language. And I think it is important to keep that in the back of our mind as teachers, always explaining, you know, what kind of language they should be using and why it is important to be using it for that particular Do you ever, do you ever throw in the word of prejudice or anything of that some people having to switch more than others? I and don't. No. no. I, because... For me, I don't. I think they get it. I think they understand it enough that you don't. They need don't. A white person telling you. Right, them. right. And to tell you the truth, they could get offended even because sometimes, you know, in situations, I don't pretend like I know because even though maybe I do understand, you know, I can't completely understand because I'm not in their shoes, you know. Yeah. So sometimes they will get offended by things. You know, I can potentially say to them, you know, pretending like I know. So instead, you know, you can do it in more of a covert manner and mm -hmm. um, explain yourself as best you can. And usually they get it and understand it. Is there anything you try to do specifically that brings out your students' identities or their voices um, from outside of class? So they know um, that, like, I would say the biggest, them and stuff. the biggest thing where they have a little bit more flexibility of um, the language they use is they, a lot of times they have choice in projects. As I was explaining before, they can, um, usually there's projects that play to the different multiple intelligences. So maybe a project might be writing a poem or creating a rap song, something like that. It gives them more flexibility in using their language. Um, also, depending on the assignment, like for example, I start class with bell work every day. Um, I am a little more lenient on how they answer the question or, mm -hmm. um, you know, even on tests, I've been a little more lenient um, as long as they get the content correctly um, and that their ideas are communicated appropriately. And you said the other day um, the Common Core is focusing on liter more literacy and mm -hmm. labs and that you're starting to have your students, re your students to teach them novels and science mm -hmm. or right. stuff. Um, do you think that sort of helps with things like, and I, because I know you teach science, so like addressing identity and in while reading, do you think that the next? Um, I mean, it definitely addresses. I address the literacy piece um, in science because it has to be integrated into all subject areas. Um, the identity piece, maybe not so much, just because science is so content specific. We don't have as much flexibility in playing with yeah. students' identities. Um, so I may not see that aspect as much or be able to have as much flexibility. Yeah, so definitely the literacy. When, like I said, when they have a project where they can sort of choose, any time they have choice, it allows them to maybe integrate their identity more than other times. Yeah, and like you said, you use those different types of genres of writing helps and stuff. Too. Mm -hmm. so, thanks for doing this interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs>